My handbag. Looks like everything is still here. That must be cabin number four. What's the doctor doing in this cabin? And is he really the doctor? And if he is, why is he wearing a wig? But even more important, who is treating Katerina Jordan? I really need to check up on her. He's looking at the photos on the wall with inordinate enthusiasm. Hello, Mr. Lee. Hello, Miss Kalenkov. Are you on board simply to relax? I have the same strategy as you. I like to combine business with pleasure. I'm on my way to a conference of the IADSES. May I ask? Of course. The International Association of the Discoverers of Stars in Everyday Situations. Uh, come again? Virtually every magazine has sensational shots of stars in extremely embarrassing situations. Yes, <laughs> you can't really miss them. We are also on the hunt for photos of famous people, but we don't climb trees and we don't creep through sewers. We have a code of honor. I see. For us, it's all about catching the star in a completely everyday situation in public. For example, when they are shopping in the supermarket, or driving, or going for a walk. Sounds... interesting. I always thought the Chinese couldn't pronounce ours properly. And I always thought Russians spent the whole day drinking vodka. You can't beat good old cliches and prejudices. That's a fine collection of cameras you have there. Aren't they pretty heavy? Yes, they are. But I was once lucky enough to meet Gina Turner at a car dealer's. I nearly wept for joy. And then the camera didn't work. Didn't have a clue why, it just didn't work. I never really recovered from that trauma. Understandable. Well, since then, I always have at least three different cameras with me, so that something like that can never happen again. You seem completely fascinated by the photos. To be honest, my fascination does have very definite boundaries. I only find the unknown beauty under the birch tree really fascinating. However, she does not seem to be a star, at least not yet. But perhaps that will change one day. Everyone started in a small way, you know. My first star was Sophia Lorraine, who accidentally spent too much time standing over a ventilation shaft during the opening of a department store. Unfortunately, it turned out that it wasn't Sophia Lorraine at all, but just a double. And it was no accident, but deliberately planned that way by the department store owner. Nevertheless, that was what started my passion for star photography. And the photos on the wall can't even keep up with the Sophia Lorraine double? Not yet. But I haven't looked at all the photos yet. Maybe one of them is a real hit. However, I realize I've become quite spoilt in this respect. Only real stars excite me now, and they probably wouldn't be seen dead on this kind of ship. Who knows? Miracles happen. You're right there. You usually bump into stars where you least expect them. For example, I once met a senator in the ladies' room. It was very embarrassing for him. I can well imagine. But what were you doing in the ladies' room yourself? Uh, oh, that, that's a long story that you uh, probably wouldn't understand. No. Probably not. I'll let you know if I bump into any stars on the way. Oh, that would be nice.
the door to the sick... Poor soul. Hopefully she'll be better soon. I don't really like her, but she's lying somewhat strangely. So twisted. People don't lie like that. Something's very wrong here. The captain may well finally call me mad, but if something really has happened, then somebody should do something about it, and fast. I must convince the captain that... Nobody's... Why do cabins like this always seem to be furnished by colorblind interior decorators? That guy with the wig is in there. No matter whether he really is the ship's doctor or not, he's got something to hide. I need to convince the captain that there is something really fishy going on here. An empty frame. Hello, I... Hello, pretty lady. What a piece of luck meeting you here. Have you taken part in our fantastic prize draw yet? Uh, no. Not that I know of. Well, then it's high time you did. Otherwise, you'll miss out on our great prizes. And what are they? Oh, I haven't properly introduced myself. You probably already know that my name is Fleming Olsen, right? No, but what's in a name? I can remember you clearly anyway. <laughs> great. I leave a lasting impression on most people. Once they meet me, they don't forget me so quickly. Yes, you can say that again. There's something I'm sure you didn't know. I work for Rain Cloud Travels, the largest and most popular travel agency in Europe. I see. Like we organize coach trips to all kinds of destinations, imaginable and unimaginable. You choose one and we'll take you there. But not just like that. Our luxury coaches will ensure that you arrive at your destination relaxed and well rested and Great. What about the prize draw, then? Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Even after so many years, I still get all worked up when I think of all the great possibilities we offer our customers. They include, for example... How does the prize draw work? What exactly can I win? And how? I'm glad you asked. On the table, you can see a few landmarks from the destinations that we at Rain Cloud Travels offer tours to. Anyone who wants to take part has to build a model of one of these landmarks for a chance to experience an unbelievable, unforgettable journey. Yes, I know some people who have traveled with this company and will probably never be able to forget it for the rest of their lives. As I said, some passengers have already participated, so not all cities are available. But the selection is still quite good. Got Paris, London, uh, Brussels, and Vienna. Just choose which landmark you want to build a model of. And then I can win a trip? 
a journey from our stunning range will be raffled amongst all the participants. And if I win, can I choose where I want to go? You don't have to worry about a thing. We practically pick you up at your front door and take you to your hotel. Of course, the excursions are free of charge as well. But you didn't answer my question. Can I choose my destination? We'll do that for you too. Just build a model of one of the remaining landmarks and you will get a numbered lottery ball from me. All participants will bring their lottery balls with them to the next port, where I will personally draw the lucky winner of a fantastic trip. I'm off now for a while. Oh, what a shame. But you can come back any time. I always enjoy charming company. <laughs> yes, I would enjoy that too. Something is still missing, otherwise the assortment doesn't really make sense. My ticket for a potential dream journey. I'll build a model of the Atomium. Even complete modeling amateurs like me can do that. If that doesn't win me a prize, I don't know what will. Here is my contribution. Can I win this great trip now? The Atomium. Well, you really have chosen the easiest of all possible landmarks. Hey, don't put my work down. I went to a lot of trouble making it. All right, this type of contribution also has a chance of winning our great journey. Here, please bring this ball to the prize draw in the next port. And with a bit of luck, I'll soon be sitting in a coach full of people with smelly feet and screaming kids. I'm already looking forward to it. You don't have to win the trip if you don't want to. Yes, I do. Sorry, I'm just not feeling too good right now. This was meant to be a vacation already, but maybe I'll have more luck next time around. A lottery ball the size of a ping-pong ball, number 27. Maybe this will really win me a vacation. One of the most famous landmarks in Europe, even though there aren't many people who would recognize it. One of the most famous... television is switched off and I don't mind leaving it that way. I'm glad I don't have to see people like that preacher of the apocalypse anymore. So much for that gorgeous weather. Something's definitely brewing up there. do for you. I was in the sick bay earlier and I'm pretty sure there's something wrong with this Katharina Jordan person. I can't say I find her particularly likable, but the way she was lying in her sick bed looked so odd. Don't you worry. Our ship's doctor is an excellent man. He knows what he's doing. That may well be, but he wasn't anywhere to be seen. Do you really think the doctor would just leave his patient to die? I'm talking to you right now, but I'm still making sure we always stay on course at the same time. Just trust the experts. They know what they're doing. I can instantly think of about 1,200 examples of the opposite, but I'm not going to be able to convince the captain without concrete proof. Does your doctor wear a wig? Not that I know of. Why? He's in a passenger's cabin at the moment, and he's definitely wearing a wig. Look. 
I don't want to get personal, but you seem to have experienced a number of strange things here on board. Exchange suitcases, disappearing handbags, doctors who went overboard. What are you saying? I'm not saying anything, but please understand, I've really got enough to do on this ship without taking care of the passengers' entertainment program. Well... Now just go and find yourself a nice deck chair and enjoy the journey. But... Do I really look like some bored bimbo who just makes all this stuff up in order to grab the limelight? It seems I do. So I need proof. Okay. So I'll get some. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you. There he is, the king of the bongos. It is quite amazing what a big noise you can make with such a small drum. Nice drums you've got there. They're bongos. Oh, sorry. How could I? No problem. You're making a terrible racket with those things. Can't you occupy yourself some other way? Sure. No problem. How? Well, how about playing ping pong, for example? I've already played that. But uh, the last ball fell into the sea. Oh. Well, what about swimming? No. That's really boring. Yes. Well, what about reading? Even more boring. I can see it won't be easy to persuade you to stop drumming. Right. That won't be easy. Don't worry, I'll think of something. Well, now I'm really curious. Cheeky kid. I like him, but it's difficult to look past that cheeky kid label. Okay then, I'll leave you and this deck to this terrible noise. Yeah! Thank you, I've gotten all I Oscar, you wanted to play ping pong, didn't you? I can't. My ball went overboard. I found you a, well, an almost perfect replacement. Cool! Thanks! Oh, what's with the number on it? It's a very special ping pong ball, and that's all I can say. And yet another chance of a nice vacation slowly going downhill. Great, thanks. I'll go straight down and get my bat. I'll just take these bongos to be on the safe side. A few hours break from this racket won't do any harm. Headphones with an integrated MP3 player. Very handy. Can I borrow that? You restored peace and quiet to the deck. It's the least I can do for you. Is that a yes? Yes. Thank you very much. Porter, barkeeper, and probably also baggage handler, cleaner, and cook. You have to be flexible as an employee nowadays. Why are you working as a barkeeper now? Didn't you have enough work to do as a porter? Yes, more than enough. But what am I supposed to do? Special circumstances require special measures. You're telling me. Where's your colleague? That's a very good question, which I have already asked myself. When I see him next, he'd better dress up warm. The question is, does the barkeeper's disappearance mean he had something to do with yesterday's events? And if so, is he the victim or the perpetrator? 
I must keep my eyes peeled and my ears to the ground to make sure I don't become the next person everyone worries about. Nice and quiet here, isn't it? Yes, how did you manage it? Secret of the trade. What a shame. I would love to know how I can avoid the boy's jokes in the future. Yes, the kid's a crafty one, but I like him in spite of that. Or maybe because of it. Above all, I value peace and quiet. Thanks a lot. You've done me a great favor. You've cut down my aging to its normal level. At least for a short time. I'm leaving now for a while. If I bump into the barkeeper while I'm gone, I'll send him to you, okay? I would be very grateful to you. I had actually imagined that I would be spending the crossing lounging in a deck chair. Instead of that, I'm having to deal with all kinds of incredible problems. Strange cabin, that wig, and the fight last night. Even if the captain seems to worry about nothing but avoiding imaginary icebergs, if I can present him with clear-cut proof that there's something screwy happening here, he will hardly be able to bury his head in the sand anymore. That must be cabin number four. He's looking at the photos. Hello, Mr. Lee. Hello, Miss Kalenkov. Could I possibly borrow one of your cameras? I'm sorry, but I never lend them out. Since that time with Gina Turner. Yeah, I get it. But it would only be very briefly. The Polaroid will do, and it really is very important. I'm sorry, but... If a star should suddenly turn up here for whatever reason, and my other cameras weren't working, and the star left the ship before you returned with the camera? Don't you think the likelihood of that scenario actually taking place is much lower than the risk of being struck here and now by a coconut? You would be surprised how many people. All right, I can see that you can't be convinced with words. I'll let you know if I bump into any stars on the way. Uh, that While my hair looks fine in any kind of... At last, I've gotten... There are still some clothes in there. <laughs> 